Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're going to be reviewing a compact blower to help you dry certain parts of your car. And it's called the Big Boy Buddy. Welcome back to the channel guys, good to see you. I am dying here with man flu. So I've got some uh, Lucasade to keep me going. Mm. Whatever the hell is in this stuff, it is not natural, but we're running on petrol vapors here. Right, let's crack on with this review. So we have the big boy buddy. What is this thing guys? It is a blower obviously designed to blast the air at bicycles, perhaps primarily because it's a smaller compact one, but also cars and to help you dry them. How much did it cost? It's 99 quid. I've just got the specs down here in front of me, so sorry, you'll see me glance down. It's got a 950 one point horsepower motor inside, 230 volts, so it's an electric one. Um, it comes with three, it says neoprene rubber attachments. So you can pop these off the end, and pop a different attachment on. Two of them are like the, the rubber ones. One of them is round, one of them's like a letterbox, and then there's another one that's like a letterbox, but it's, it's hard plastic, and it's a slightly thinner letterbox. Um, just from playing around with the, the, the tools, I actually just prefer the standard um, round hose. That kind of works for me. Um, there might be a reason to kind of change that fan pattern with the other ones, so you can play around with that, see if you like any of the other ones. It comes with two filters in it. Um, sorry, one filter that's in there and a spare filter. So it's like a, you know, it's drawing air in. So the air's got to go through that filter. So it should help protect, you know, not sucking in dust and blowing it out the other side. It's usable operating temperature range is 15 degrees to 45 degrees, which I thought was really interesting because 15 degrees it gets colder than that, doesn't it? Um, so does that mean I can't use it if in, the, in winter when it's like five degrees or zero degrees or something? I expect you can, but just interesting that, 15 to 45 degrees, the weight is 1.5 kilos, so it's nice and light. Your typical machine polisher weighs about, you know, 2.5 to three kilos, something like that. So it's about sort of over half the weight of a polisher, so you can hold it in your hand and it's not too heavy, quite maneuverable, which was important for me. It comes with about a 210 centimetre, or roughly a two metre length cable, which I have here. So you can see, we'll talk about that in a second. This is the original cable that's come with the machine that I've taken off. It comes with a two year warranty. Another feature of this tool is that it maintains the air temperature, whatever the current temperature is, it puts the air temperature out as 25 degrees above that, so it's kind of warm air. Um, not sure how important that is to me, but it's in there anyway, so it's obviously got some sort of little heater that's warming up the air. It's got two speeds, low and high, and a speed range of 77 kilometers per hour through to 250 kilometers per hour. Um, which is, translates to a speed of around 45 to 155 miles an hour um, speed. It's more about the flow and how much air it's putting through than the speed. Um, but there's those figures. That's pretty much all the specs, guys. Now we're going to get stuck into the important stuff about this. What do I think about it? And I want to talk about blowers a little bit in general. And if you're in the market for one, what are the important things? Next, I want to put kind of talk about choices, guys, whenever you're thinking about air blowers. The first thing is you've got lots of different powers. So you can get like this. This is the little handheld one. They've got a blower mini, which is one that you wheel around with the hose, and a bigger kind of blower mini called the blower Pro R, I think it is. So the Pro R is about 330 quid and the mini's 150 quid. Um, you've also got, you know, big leaf blowers and um, stuff like that and, and pet blowers that you can get that will give you more airflow than this if that's what you really want. Um, so decide on, the, on your sort of whether or you not want a really beefy, high airflow, higher speed one, or you want just like a mini one. For me, I wanted the mini one and I'll talk about why later on. Set yourself a budget, how much you want to spend, guys. Um, you know, you, the most expensive ones are up at 330 quid. Do you want to spend that? Well, just say how much do you want to spend in your head on a blower 
and then look at what's available first. Then if nothing decent is, then look a little bit above that is, is my recommendation. Um, we'll come back to price a little bit later on and what I think about value of this sort of thing. The next thing you probably want to decide, guys, is if you're going to use a cordless um, one, so one that is run on batteries or one that you plug into the mains. The cordless has lots of advantages, and I looked at whether to get a cordless blower like the Flex one or, or a cheaper kind of other non-detailing one, if you like, like DeVault or a Bosch or whatever. There's loads of them. The problem is you've got to go and buy... You've got to support batteries for that particular device and have another little battery charger plugged in. So those power cordless ones make more sense if you've got some of those power tools and those batteries already and you're maintaining those batteries. Um, or otherwise the risk is you're going to go to use the tool when you've, you've not got a charged battery. Uh, and I didn't want to take up a socket in my garage with just batteries for a blower. Um, so I decided I wanted a corded um, tool. First thing for me is I didn't really want massive amount of airflow. I just wanted it for the smaller intricate areas of the car. Um, and I wanted it to be able to get in there. So like on the door jams, just holding this in my hand, I can get right into the door jams and blow up and down them. That was one thing that's, that lent me towards this little tiny handheld format, even rather than, than one of those kind of blowers that's battery operated, that's got a long stem on it. Because it's not quite as, wieldy when you've got a long stem there's some advantages of reaching over when you're doing the scuttle and getting down into the wheels but when you're in the sort of tight areas i knew that i was going to get right in there with this kind of blower so straight away that was one of the reasons why i went for it the main reason guys was the size and the weight there are no blowers that i know of that that weigh 1.2 kilos um, i was less worried about whatever the airflow is but i had a look and compared it to the metro vac um, and I think the Metrovac Blaster, you know, the equivalent little handheld one, has, um, I think, uh, the equivalent of maximum airflow of 320 kilometres per hour, whereas this one is 250. So it sounds like the Metrovac Blaster, whatever it's called, sidekick thing, um, is a bit more powerful than this one in terms of the, the airflow through it. However, it's 2.2 kilos and twice the weight. So that 2.2 kilos is about the weight of a machine polisher. And I figured that half the weight was a little bit more important to me. I didn't care about the um, air blow. It does also come with a two year warranty instead of a one year warranty. So fast and light, but this costs 20 quid more than the Metrovac Sidekick Blaster. And one thing that was running through my mind is that the, the Sidekick Blaster is an American made tool. And this is a Chinese made tool. So normally if something's Chinese, like I've said before on the channel, I, I like it to be cheaper than the Western equivalent. And it was a consideration for me that this was 20 quid more than the Metrovac. But I've gone with it anyway because I wanted that weight. I'm just, I'm taking a punt. Um, there is one other negative about this, guys, and it's a big thing. And it's, there's lots of personal things, you know, tiny little things that are very important to each individual. To me, the two meter cable or 210 centimeter cable that come with it was never gonna work for me. My extension lead is on a reel and I've gotta put the base of the reel down and plug into that. I'd have to reposition that reel about four or five times, maybe more while I'm blowing the car. And that I just find annoying. And it's one of the reasons, well, it's, I just find it annoying and I knew it was gonna annoy me. If you just use a single socket, socket extension lead and plug into that, you're going to be dragging the plug around and it's kind of going to be banging on the ground and stuff like that. It might catch under the wheels. That was going to annoy me as well. So the only option for me was to extend the cable on the machine. Now I'll say one thing here, guys. I've used the correct spec heavy duty cable. I went down to a Sparky's and showed them the original code on the cable. And they gave me exactly the same spec cable. It's heavy duty, so it can take being trodden on and stuff like that. It's a good cable, actually. However, it is a major pain in the arse to take this machine apart and fit this in there. You need to get some new crimp connectors, shielded crimp connectors, for the, 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 the main power feed. Um, you also need to get a ground loop uh, crimp connector for the earth connection that connects onto the side. Um, I would not recommend... Uh, unless well I just I cannot recommend to anyone that you take this apart it's very difficult to take apart and fit this cable and it took me about three hours of, um, I also have invalidated my warranty by doing so and if my machine breaks now I cannot take it back so much
just goes in the bin and I won't buy another one if it breaks because I don't want that two meter cable. Those are the negatives guys and I've also mentioned the price versus the, the Western offerings. I felt it should have been cheaper. They'll argue differently, it's their machine. The risk for, for companies like Big Boy is that um, you have the pet blowers and at the moment I couldn't find a pet blower, like a handheld pet blower like this. Sooner or later one might come along and just, if these are popular, someone might go and offer them and undercut them massively on price. Because those pet blowers are between 60 to 80 quid with the hoses that you drag around and they are good. You can use those and a lot of guys and professionals are using them because they, they're, they're, they're sort of half the price and very effective. Someone could come along and undercut this and, and offer it for about 40 or 50 pounds and it might still be a good machine even if it's Chinese made. In which case, these guys are gonna, you know, they're gonna struggle to compete price-wise when it's twice the cost if that other one's doing a similar thing. So that was on my mind, guys, and it's sort of the stuff I have to cover as a view. However, I've still gone and got the thing because there was nothing else out there that was, that was like it. Um, Overall though, apart from this issue with the power cable and the price, the machine has been everything I wanted it to be. Using it, I can get around my car quickly, get all the water out of the crevices first of all, in the door jams, the wing mirrors, under the scuttle, in the engine bay, under the, you know, lift up the hatchback and the, the run, water runoff areas there, even the exhaust tips, the alloy wheels, everything. Really nice to use, light, my arm wasn't getting tired. They felt like there was enough airflow and it just did the job I wanted it to. So I'm really, really happy in that sense. And then once I've blown all the area out the crevices, then I would dry off the panels with the towel. It's not powerful enough to do the panels on a car, but even the most powerful ones, guys, they tend to atomize all of the water that's on there and just create loads of droplets. So I, never, I always feel like you can never really fully dry a car with air, although some people might disagree. Um, I always think just doing the panels lightly with the towel and then using these for the crevice areas is the way to go. So that's everything really I had to say on this guys. Um, I'm really happy with my purchase um, and I think it's a good tool. The most important use of it guys is being able to dry quickly now in the summer where that water will start sort of drying and creating water spots if you can't get it off. So I'll be using this kind of more and more this at this point of year of the year and I'll be wanting to use it very quickly. This machine does exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, it's relatively simple and it's and I can recommend it. But like I say, I think big boy, big boy, big boy could definitely have put a longer cable on this. No, no matter what the implications are to power flow and stuff like that, I just think it would have, much, even if it was just four or five meter cable, they'd be doing themselves a lot of favors, but a two meter cable, is definitely too short um, and it's very difficult to modify. I want to I want to emphasize that point so I'm not recommending anybody goes ahead and changes the cable on this because it is a, a major pain. Um, that's it for me guys let me know what you feel about this whole subject of air drying and blowers. A lot of you watching probably won't have a blower and stuff like that so think about what you want, what your, your choice is What's your priority? Like I covered at the start of the video, be aware of this tool. And for me, I think it's a really good option um, in that sort of very compact, fast to use, handheld blower where there's not a lot of options out there. And its biggest strength is its lightness and the way you can get right in there where you need to, to blow out all the water. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. Bye for now. Is that we got plenty of time.